most people, when they picture a wave, they kind of picture what you see right there, kind of like an up and down, kind of ocean wave type situation. And that is one type of wave, so we'll take a look at that first. But we do have to realize there's actually two types uh, in terms of mechanical waves that we're going to take a look at. So the wave that you most likely think of when you're thinking of a wave is what's known as a transverse wave. And the reason it's called a transverse wave is because we have two things going on. So let's say this wave is moving to the right. The energy is being transmitted to the right. So waves don't actually transmit matter. They don't transmit particles. Particles move, but the, it's energy that's being transmitted. So imagine you're in the ocean or in a pool and you're, standing, you're sitting on a raft. As waves come by, you kind of bob up and down, but you don't ride, you're not pushed to the shore with the wave. Uh, if waves transported matter, then you would literally be pushed with that wave all the way to the beach. You'd never be able to go into the water because the waves would always be pushing you, like physically pushing you back and you wouldn't be able to get through. The fact that you can walk through the waves shows you that there's energy that's hitting you and the energy is trying to push you backwards, but the individual water molecules are not actually like being thrust towards you. So waves transmit energy and the molecules within the water actually bob up and down for the most part. There's a little bit of kind of forward and backwards motion, but they're actually moving up and down. So the reason we call this transverse wave is the molecules in the water are actually kind of moving up and down while the energy is moving to the right in this case. So the molecules vibrate perpendicularly to the motion of the wave energy. So maybe it's easier if you think of a rope. If you tie one end of a rope to a tree and you move your hand up and down, the rope itself, the rope molecules are not like leaving your hand. The rope is not getting transmitted over to the tree. You're transmitting energy through the rope. Those molecules are moving up and down, but the energy is transmitted along kind of the, the perpendicular axis. So transverse wave is one in which the molecules are vibrating at a perpendicular fashion to the energy that the wave is transmitting. But there is another form that we've all kind of probably played around with if we've ever had a slinky, but we less commonly think of waves like this. Imagine you have a slinky, one person's holding one end, you're holding the other, and you move your hand like forward and backwards instead of up and down. What you'll wind up with is you'll wind up with these sections where the slinky is kind of compressed, and these compressed sections will be, will be kind of sent down the length of the slinky, and they'll hit the, you know, your friend's hand who's holding the other end. So in a case like this, the energy is still moving to the right. By pushing that slinky like forward and backwards, we're sending these compressed sections to the right, so the energy is to the right. But if we were to analyze any individual molecule on this slinky, it's not moving up and down, it's moving side to side. So in this case, the particles are actually moving parallel or in the same plane as the energy, and we call that a longitudinal wave. So a transverse is where the molecules vibrate perpendicularly to the wave energy. A longitudinal wave vibrates parallel. And that would be something like sound. So the sound you're hearing right now, air molecules are being pushed forward. They're bumping into the next one. They're bumping into the next one. They're bumping into the next one. And that's transmitting the energy. But the molecules aren't moving up and down as the energy moves forward. They're moving in the same direction as the energy. They just bounce off the next molecule and then ricochet. So they're moving back and forth. They're vibrating left and right, left and right, left and right as the energy is being moved rightward down this slinky. That's known as a longitudinal wave. So in order to discuss these and understand anything that we might read or come across in more detail, we need to understand what we call wave anatomy. There's characteristics of both of these types of waves. It's just terminology that we essentially have to memorize so that we know how to analyze these properly. And we can use some of this terminology when we're kind of furthering our understanding of what's going on with these. So I'm going to start with a transverse wave and then I'll explain the longitudinal wave. So that dotted line in the middle is what we call equilibrium. So imagine the ocean. If there was no wind, it was a very calm day, you wouldn't have waves. You would just have like a flat, you know, flat lake or a flat ocean. So the equilibrium is if the waves weren't present, where would this whatever water level be? What would this rope be doing if you weren't shaking it? Equilibrium is just essentially where all the molecules want to be if they weren't being disrupted by this wave energy. So anything that's above, the highest points, I should be clear here, the highest points above, why is this not drawing? The highest points above that equilibrium point are called crests, the, the maximum point. So anytime you see or hear the word crest, that just means the maximum uh, height that this wave reaches above the equilibrium point. The lowest point is called the trough, and that would be the maximum lowest location. So again, just terminology we kind of have to memorize. The height above and below from the equilibrium is called the amplitude, not from the 
crest the trough from the equilibrium to a crest or the equilibrium to a trough that is called the amplitude. That's actually what carries the wave energy. That's why that's important to know. So you think about like a tsunami. A tsunami has a ridiculously high amplitude and that's why it can literally destroy cities because the energy associated with the amplitude is astronomically high in that situation. The last term would be the wavelength. The wavelength is either measured from a crest to a crest or a trough to a trough. It could even be measured from a point on the equilibrium point. But if you do that as an example, here, if I wanted to start at this point, you'll notice there's like an upward slope here. So this would not be my end because that's a downward slope. So I would need to find the next equilibrium point that has an upward slope. So I could also say that something like that is one wavelength, which we represent with uh, this symbol, which is lambda. Um, but just understand, it doesn't have to be a crest to a crest or a trough to a trough. You just need to find a point on the wave and then move to the next identical point, and that is technically a wavelength. But you'll typically see it, uh, as I've outlined here, or from crest to crest or trough to trough. You don't usually see it like in some weird partial wave to partial wave thing. But just realize if you're going from one point and then you find the next identical point, that's considered one wavelength. For the longitudinal wave on the bottom, it's somewhat similar, but we don't have crests and troughs because we don't have areas that are above and below some equilibrium point. We have the sections where everything's compressed together, and luckily we just call those compressions. The interesting term, which is likely new, those areas where you don't have compressions, those are called rare factions. Rare factions. Those are just areas where you have kind of a lot of space, the opposite of a compression. Uh, the wavelength is essentially the same thing. It's either a compression to a compression or a rarefaction to a rarefaction. So if we're going to measure a wavelength, with, which becomes important when we're looking at things like wave speed, which we'll look at moving down the road, understanding how to find a wavelength is, is pretty important. So that's something that we will certainly practice.